everyone and welcome to this video for the 11 plus non-verbal reasoning section and in this video I'm going to give you some practice questions and some top tips to help you prepare for the 11 plus now if you've watched if you've watched my other videos then you would have understood what the 11 plus is all about but for those of you that have not seen those videos here is a brief summary of what the 11 plus test is all about so in primary school, when children are about to leave the final year, they may opt to take the 11 plus. So this test is basically a test designed for pupils who wish to attend a grammar secondary school after leaving key stage two. So some teachers may encourage their pupils to take this test just to give them the opportunity of attending a grammar school if they wish to choose this option at the end. So generally, most pupils will be at the age of 10 when they take this test and the test can contain up to four disciplines including maths, English, verbal and non-verbal reasoning. And like I just said, this video is only going to focus on the non-verbal reasoning section. And if you do want some videos on the other sections including maths, English and verbal reasoning, then please check out my other, other videos after watching this one. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you will be kept up to date with my, with my 11 plus exam videos. So here are some brief tips to help you prepare for the 11 plus okay so allow for plenty of study breaks so even if they're only five or ten minutes long so this will really help to refresh the memory and keep your child calm and focused. Keep in mind that a child's attention rate is usually between 30 to 50 minutes long so any longer than this and your child will start to lose focus. Active revision games is a great way to stay interactive with the topic. So revision games and mock tests are great exam techniques to use to prepare for the 11 plus. Stick a piece of paper up on the fridge highlighting all of the areas you wish to cover. So that way you can improve on your weaker areas and improve your overall 11 plus scores. Using highlighters is a great way to distinguish your answers, so highlighting is helpful if you're counting lots of shapes or working out numbers of angles, etc. When completing grid-based questions, you can always work backwards, okay? So by working backwards, you would have to do the opposite to what is being asked. And this is a great way to see if you do have the correct answer. Now remember to pay attention to everything, so if you're unsure about what the differences are, what's happening in the sequence, Pay attention to everything you see, so count all the sides and angles, what the colours and shading use, the line types, sizing, rotations or reflections. And that way you can eliminate what is the same and what is different about the sequence. Try drawing out the questions as you go, so drawing out the answers of what you think it may look like, i.e. if the shape is rotated or reflected, will help you to visualise the answers more clearly. And finally, don't forget to check out our free online psychometric testing and sample questions to make sure that you're fully prepared for your 11 plus assessment. And I've given you the link right there, so don't forget to have a look at that after watching this video. Okay, so let's have a look at some practice questions. So practice question one, what comes next in the sequence? So here in the top row, we've got our sequence and in the bottom row, we have our answer options. And your job is to work out what would come next in the sequence. So how is the pattern progressing? So the best way to work out questions like this is to take one part of the shape and see how it changes throughout the sequence. So let's have a look at this white dot here. And how is this changing in the next shape? So we can see that it's moving one, two, three spaces in a clockwise motion. So one, two, three will go there, one, two, three, so the white dot is now there, one, two, three, so you know the white dot's there. So in the next sequence, you know that this white dot is going to be three spaces to the clockwise direction. So one, two, three, so you know the white dot is going to end up right there. So we can eliminate the answers we know to be incorrect. And in fact, we can eliminate A, B, and D. So we're only left with answer option C, which is in fact the correct answer. Now, we only looked at one part, and you can look at the other parts, but we don't really have to for this question because we've eliminated three of the four options. You know that answer C is in fact the correct answer. So practice question two. So which figure completes the sequence pattern? So you're not finding the next one. 
you're finding the one that comes first in this sequence. And in order to work out the first one, you're going to have to work backwards and see how the sequence has progressed forwards, but you will need to work backwards in order to find the first one. So let's have a look. So we can see that we have a hexagon shape with six dots inside, which two are black and four are white. And you can see that these dots are moving one space around the hexagon as so. So that space there is blank, that space there is blank, that space there is blank. And that space there is blank. So you know that this one, in order to work backwards, the next blank space is going to be at the bottom because you're working one space anti clockwise. So we can automatically eliminate answer B and D and E. So our answer options, possible answer options, are A and C. So another thing, we're going to have to take another part of the shape and see how that changes. And as you can see, we do have a black square in the corner of the shape and this starts off in the top left corner and moves one space anti-clockwise like so so you know that the next one to, f to start the sequence is going to move one space anti-clockwise again so it would go there so you know the answer is going to be C because the answer A does not have a black square at all and it's every other box has a black square okay so practice question three so we have this shape is to this shape, as this shape is to, so you're working out how this changes into this shape. Now as you can see, it's the same shape, but it simply is smaller and has a vertical line through the middle of the shape. So you know that this applies to this sequence. So you need to find a shape that's in this style, so all of them do apply. It has to be smaller, so we can eliminate answer option C. It has to have a vertical line going through the middle, so we can eliminate answer A and D because this one is going horizontal and not vertical. So your answer is B. So practice question four. Work out the codes for the figures and decide which answer has the correct code for figure four. So here are your codes. So we've got two shapes in each box and we have two letters and they're representing either the shape or the colour or anything. So let's have a look. So as you can see, we have a square in box 2 and in box 3 and the letters N, T, E, N. So you know that the N is referring to the square. So we know that the E for this one is referring to this. So we know that that shape in box 4 is going to be the same letter so that would be an E. So again we can rule out A, B and C and our answer is D because you know that this shape here is being signified by the letter E and again you can work out what the other one signified just to double check your answer. Practice question five so work out which option is a reflection of the question figure. So we've got the question figure here and you have to be very careful to see where the mirrored reflection is going to be. Now, as you can see, this line here is our vertical mirrored reflection. So if we place a mirror along this line, you would be reflecting this shape right here. So here are your answer options. So what would the shape look like if it was reflected using the mirror line? So to get some practice for these types of questions, it's best to draw these shapes out yourself and then uh, fold the paper in half and draw that onto the other side and see how it looks on uh, both sides and you can see how the mirrored reflection would be and the more you practice these obviously the quicker and easier these types of questions will become so as you can see the star is on slightly on the top left of this black square so we know that this is going to be reflected and the black square would have the triangle on its right upper side. So we can eliminate answer option B. The black dot in the top of the star will remain in the same place. So we can eliminate answer A. And we can see that there's a white circle in the black square, which is closest to the mirrored line. So again, this is going to be closest to the mirrored line for the answer option. So it would be answer C because this white circle is on the wrong side. So you can see how closely these two look, but you need to take each element in order to see 
whether it's mirrored correctly. Practice question six, so which set does the test shape belong to, A, B or neither? So here we have our test shape, and then we have set A and set B. So you need to pay attention to colours and shapes for these types of questions. So does the test shape belong to either set? So let's see what set it belongs to, if any. So the test shape belongs, um, begins with a black rectangle. So you know it could belong to set B because it, belong, it starts with a black rectangle. And the colours are exactly the same. So you've got black, white, black, black, white, black. And then the underneath smaller shapes are black, white, black, grey, black, white, black, grey. So we know it's not set A because the colour scheme for these are completely different. So the answer is set B. And remember, it's not just the colours. Sometimes these sequences might be focusing on the particular shapes used. Okay, So it's really, care really important that you pay attention to what is shown in the sequence. So practice question seven. Which figure is an exact rotation of the first? So here we have the first shape and you, you have to determine which of the answers is an exact rotation. Okay, So nothing can be manipulated or reflected in the shapes. So if we, and again the best way to practice these types of questions is to draw it out and then just turn the paper and see how it would look in different positions. So as you can see we've got our black rectangle so we can eliminate answer option A because this has a white rectangle so we can automatically eliminate that one then we can work out that the correct answer D is D because this is just 180 degrees rotated in order to get that one so if we rotated this to get B the rectangle is in a slightly different position and the arrow would be facing the other way. And answer option C, if you moved, you could not move this shape 90 degrees clockwise without turning this shape on its side. So this would actually be on its side as opposed to being like this. And again, the arrow would be in a completely different place and the lines and square would not be in the correct position. Practice question eight. So which two shapes are identical to one another? So these are relatively easy questions. You just need to spot which two answers look exactly the same. And you should be able to spot fairly quickly that answers D and E are the same. And as you can see, they all look quite similar, but you need to make sure that they're in exactly the same position as each other. Practice question nine. So which shape can be created by matching the corresponding letters in the grey box? So using the box like shown here, we've got shapes with letters and you have basically have to match the, sh the shapes based on where the letters are. So you know that this part of the triangle is going to be positioned on top of this hexagon here. And then this shape here would be positioned there and this side of this rectangle would be positioned here. So the correct answer for this is B because the triangle would be there as shown. If you move that rectangle to there, it would be there. And moving that one to the side here would be there. So again, you can just automatically eliminate ones that look completely obscure because you know that that's not how it's going to look at the end. So that completes it for this 11 plus non-verbal reasoning video. If you do want any more practice questions, please click on the link below. Make sure that you check out my other videos for the 11 plus because they do go over English, maths and verbal reasoning. Thank you for watching and I hope this has helped and I wish you all the very best of luck with your 11 plus.